Ah oh, yeah, what's good people? I go by the name of Retch32 and I'm here chilling, talking with Paul's TV. Stay up. Pause it. <clears throat> Growing up I listened to a lot of reggae, um, a lot of Bashman, um, quite a bit of old school hip hop and a lot of R&B. I grew up in a house with all women. When my dad left it was just me. My uh, two older sisters, my mum and my younger sister. It, it just made me love music, to be fair, um, period. You know, just every, every bedroom in the house having a stereo and everyone playing something different and then the front room playing something different. So every room you walk into, it's got a different mood. Everyone's in a different mood, a different vibe just because of music. And you kind of just feel the power of great songs and songs that have feeling. Um, and it kind of just, you know, it cheers us up sometimes. So, yeah. Yeah, of course. Because um, the radio is like directly gets to the public. Like, obviously, your, your Twitter feed only reaches your fans and your Instagram only reaches your fans. Um, the radio has its own demographic. Of course, it encourages your core fan base to listen to the station to hear the record as well. But the radio has a, a, a big support system, the number of listeners that you need to tap into to get bigger, to reach the mass market. Um, I'm singing on this, or I'm not rapping, should I say, rather than singing. Um, so that's that's a complete change of style, automatically. Yeah, yeah I feel like people are always questioning what the next record is going to sound like. Oh, what are you going to do next? You came through with Chakta. What are you going to do next? You came through with Unorthodox. Sounds completely different. Then you slowed it down with Don't Go. Then Blackout. Then doing OK. Now this. Like, what's next? And I think it's good. It's, it's challenging. I wouldn't say I feel pressure. I just say it's challenging because when I'm in the studio, I'm, I'm aware of this. And when I'm making stuff, I'm like, we need new sounds, we need to create new sonics, we need to cre create new waves and new vibes. Um, and especially with this record, I just wanted to make something that was bigger than the genre. I think every so often an artist steps out and makes a record that's bigger than their niche, because grime or urban music in this country is still an, uh, a niche. You know, So I think I needed to make something bigger than that just to shine light back on it. Chemistry, energy, powers, man. When I say powers, I mean, as a musician, I know so much. Another musician knows so much. When we come together and we bring our knowledge together and we create a song, especially good musicians, it's always phenomenal because it's two people bringing, you know, two things to the table rather than just one. And I might think, you know, something sounds sick like this and then a singer might say, nah, do you know what, if you add a melody to that or change that melody and add a harmony, it makes it feel like this. But without that singer being in the room, I wouldn't have that knowledge, you know? And without me being in there telling a singer, nah, man, you should have a rap verse at the end of this song to add a different dynamic and to bring the new fans or new listeners to this record, then he might not have that knowledge. So it's always good to, to work with musicians. I like to be in the studio with creative people in general like I don't like like when it's just quiet I like the producer to be eccentric I like everyone to be creative everyone to have an input because you know a few heads are better than one you know, I don't really think like that to be fair like I off head I would always say like Chris Martin or someone like that because I think that you know we would make a great record but I don't know to be fair like I only know who I want to collaborate with once I hear the song and once I feel the record. And then I know, okay, cool, I want this person to come on this. You know, if it's, if it's for my project, I don't just want to say, like, I want to get in with Tayo Cruz or I want to get in with Jeremiah and, 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 and not know what I want to make. It kind of starts from the music and then spirals out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many. Um, too many to whittle down. Frustrating on one hand, but still overwhelming and comforting that I'm still able to make this amount of records. Because some people just run out of things to say. It actually happens, like you write so much. The 
there's only so much you're going to be able to get out of it. You know, it's a lot. So, um, yeah, we do make a lot of records, man. We've got so many, man. So many to whittle down for this album, man. Mm. No, not really. I don't think, like, my part making the album is always going to be the easiest bit. I think it's when it gets into the political stage of things. Where it's like, how many singles are we going to do? And sales projections and what singles have to do and this one has to do that that's when it starts getting a bit funky but when it comes to to my part like i make my album and, and i'm good to go so it's not really the recording this is more all the other stuff on stage i always like to come out with like a big hood like something that's just covering my face because i like the suspense of not being on yet but then still you come out but there's still the suspense to see your face it just adds to it like so I'd wear like a big jacket or just some big hoods or big you know what they call um, um, funnel necks and, and, and hats and stuff like that um, I like to be comfortable so a nice pair of fitted jeans or like you know like you get like tracksuit bottoms that are a bit stylish still because you still got a, you still got a bit styling up there and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, I just thought that suit was gangster, man. Um, my, my, my tailor was showing me some colours and going into the season that it was going into, I just felt like that would be really turned up right there. So, yeah, I done that. Yeah. yeah, and I think when I, I believe like feeling good means feeling comfortable. So, wherever I am, I always want to feel comfy. Like, I don't, I wouldn't put on something that I'm like, it's irritating me or it's like it's scratching my back or I'm cold or something like that do you know what I mean I always want to feel comfortable comfortable I think be comfy first style second but still stylish comfortably stylish that's what I'm saying yeah um I think Gandhi turns up um I think Tiny Reggie Yates do me as well um yeah to name a few yeah I thought that was sick. Something that I never ever thought I'd do. Probably something I've been the most nervous, felt the most nervous about doing in a long time. Everyone was like, no, but you perform in front of thousands of people. Why is this? And I was like, I don't know. Because normally, like, it's my show. I'm in control. Like, I know what I'm saying and it's songs. But now it's like, say nothing and walk. Like, don't mess up. So it was, it was quite nerve-wracking but I only done it because I connected with Oliver otherwise I wouldn't have done it at all um, but it was definitely something that I ticked off my list so I enjoyed it do you know what everyone kind of feels like they want to make the next biggest best clothing brand like I think I'm more if I put my foot in I don't know because I was messing around with a tailor for a bit but I, I just see that it's just it's mad stressful man it's mad stressful and it's got to be to be the best you got to spend a lot do you know what I mean and I don't ever want to come into something half hearted and say yeah I'm, and just exploit it like because I look at it like there's people that's been going to fashion school for so many years so I don't want to come in and take the mic off and just you know surpass them just because of who I am in music I don't think that's right so I'd always want to have the education have the knowledge and, and make the best product but um I don't know man, maybe an accessory or something to start with, I don't know why, I'm just messing around with these little hats, um, just because it's like I never really see an all leather piece, um, so I, I went in, I was trying to do everything with these, I was trying to get like all suede, but the problem with that is, I take the hat off and then it drops down, the back of it just drops down because it's not strong enough, and I was trying so much different materials and I was like alright cool, let's do the all leather one and you know, try and turn up like that, so I just try and add my little spin on things. Um, there'll definitely be some performances this year and um, we're just up and about you know getting back into the swing of things we should have a tour next year um, the album should come next year as well so 2015 should be the one man. I think in ways it's easier but in other ways it's harder I say it's easier because the internet is 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 a great tool and you can get everywhere just from from this internet thing and that's a great thing but I think the disadvantage of that is sometimes you do too much on it and then your whole catalogue like your your triumphs your victories and your mistakes are there for everyone to see 
a lot of the mistakes I made were behind visible doors. Like you couldn't see it. Maybe you could hear me make a mistake on the pirate radio, but you couldn't see me. You didn't know what I looked like. You didn't know what I was wearing. Now, when they're in the radio stations, you can see them. So if you're if you're doing a video, I can see it. If you're just doing a freestyle, I can see it. I can always see you. So you always have to be looking right, looking the part, sounding the part. You have to be a lot more conscious of things like that. So it's, it's definitely a gift and a curse being an artist and coming through in this era. I think you need honesty. And I think it needs to flow like a record, man. Like, I don't like listening to an album when I can hear an artist has just made 14 singles and just made a compilation of their music and, and, and flung that out. I don't feel like that's an album. Like. You go back, you listen to like classic albums, they got interludes, like certain tracks flow into each other. There's a journey, there's a story, there's a consistent message. And I think we've lost that a bit, but maybe it's good that we've lost it because I like doing stuff like that. So that's maybe what makes my album stand out. So I just like the flow of things, man. A crossing barrel, you song, yeah.